Okay, um, this is Thursday, November the 11th. So happy Veterans Day if you're a veteran or if you know somebody that is. Um, but I didn't have time in class to record everything from the review. So I am gonna take a few minutes to supplement the class time just in case ever, you know, anyone really wanted to see the other problems that we didn't get to in class, um, if they wanted to see those worked out. So um, this is more just, you know, in case you wanted to watch this extra bit, you're not required necessarily to watch this video, um, but there may be something in there that may service you for the test, okay? So we're gonna continue and we're gonna work on all the problems that we didn't get to on the review in class today. So that's going to be number 40. I'm going to start with number 40. And then I'm going to go back and do the problems we didn't get to, which was 32, 33, 34, 36, and 38. Okay. So that's the game plan for right now. Um, let me share my screen so that I can pull those questions up so you can see what they look like. So again, I'm going to start with number 40. So this one says the population in thousands of a certain city from 2000 through 2014 can be modeled by this function here, which I'm going to write down on my paper. It says where T represents the year um, with T equal to zero corresponding to 2000. Um, then it tells me in 2008, um, the population was six hundred and sixty eight thousand and twenty five. Okay. So the first part says find the value of K um, and then is the population increasing or decreasing, please explain. So let me go over into the document camera. Um, where's my vision? There it is. Come on, visualizer. If it won't pop up, then I will just do something else. Um, no, it doesn't seem like it wants to open. So let's have a backup plan. Let me stop sharing. Oh, it did look like it was gonna work. Share again. Okay. So we've got the visualizer up, but again, it does not look like it's reading anything. So let me close this and let me just go ahead and do what I was going to do, which is change my camera here. There we go. So I might have to do that. That's okay. Um, I'll work with it. I'm not in the classroom, so the technology in my office is a little bit different than it is in the classroom. But I did go ahead and write down this information. And so um, if we're looking at these pencil shavings, um, this was the function that they gave me. And they told me that in 2008, this was the population. Now, t equal to 0 corresponds to 2000. So t equal to 8 is going to correspond to 2008. OK? So I'm going to plug in these values and hopefully try to solve for that k. So I'm going to have 168025 equal to 110.7 e to the k times 8. And let's see, I'm going to have to divide by this coefficient to isolate the exponential part. And let's see what that is. 168025 divided by 110.7. I get this number. And it does probably keep going. But then from here, I'm going to switch the forms over. So I'm going to get log base E of that number equal to 8K. Remember, log base E is just the LN. And so then I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. And so then in my calculator, I'm going to do fraction ln of my answer so that it plugs that in there, close it up, and then divide by 8. And I get 0 0.915630, so on and so forth. 
And I do believe that it asked me to round. So I'm gonna share my screen again and check out what it says. Um, it says round to four decimal places. So that would be 0 0.9156. And the three is not enough to make the six go up. Now, this is a positive value. So it's either gonna be the top one or the bottom one. But if it's a positive, then that means that the rate, it's a growth um, formula, which means that the population should be increasing. If it were negative, then the population should be decreasing. So these two middle ones should not ever be considered. Positive means it's increasing, negative means it's decreasing, okay? Now part B says, use the model to predict the populations of the city in 2020 and 2025, okay? So I'm gonna take our formula, let me stop sharing again. And now that we have the rate, we actually have a complete formula and it looks like this. Okay, and so if I wanna find the population in 2020, that means I'm going to plug in 20 for T. And if I wanna find the population in 2025, I'm going to be plugging in 25 for T. And so both of these can be typed in the calculator. I'm gonna type 110.7 e to the 0 0.9156 times 20. And I get 9.9290. Four two zero. So it's going to be about um, this population. Hold on, I think I might have made an error here. It says P is in thousands. Ah, so I did make an error. I did, I did. Okay, so let me stop. It said P was in thousands. Um, so when I plug this in, this is already in thousands. So in order for me to plug it in, I actually have to divide by a thousand before I can plug that in. So I did make an error there because of the measurement. It's not just in people, it's in um, thousands of people which means I should have been plugging in 168.025 for P. So 168.025. So then that divided by 110.7 is actually not such a large number here. It's actually just 1.5178410012. So then when I come over here, it's going to be that smaller decimal, which is 1.5 something, right? So then when I get my K value, it's actually probably not gonna be the same value. Let's see. So we're gonna do ln of that number over eight. And I get this smaller value. And so if I round that to one, two, three, four, that's gonna be 0 0.0522 is what I'm gonna type in the calculator in the computer for K. So when I come over here and I plug it in, I am going to have to plug in this value. So I did type that in incorrectly. Is probably why this number was so huge. Okay. So in 2000, the population was about 110,000. In 2008, it was about 168,000. 
Now let's go see what it's going to look like in 2020. So 110.7 e to the 0 0.0522 times 20. That makes more sense. So then if, I, if this is in thousands, then I'm going to multiply by a thousand to get the actual population. So times 1,000 means the population is 314,449. And then because it's 0. 0.6, you can't have really 0. 0.6 of a person. So this is going to go from 49 to 50. And so there's about that many people now in 2020. Now let's go check the other one. So I'm gonna go back and take in this and change the 20 to a 25. And I get that P is about 408,000 on this decimal. So again, if I wanna know the exact population, I have to multiply by a thousand. And so that I get that it's 408,227. And the point 0.1 is not enough to go up to a whole person. So it's just going to stay at 408,227. I believe there is a third part to this problem. Um, so it says the populations are not reasonable. The population cannot continue to increase at the same rate it did from year 2020 to 2025. And then here it says the populations are reasonable if it continues to increase at the same rate. I would choose option A or option B, the second one. Now it says, according to the model, what during what year will the population reach 210? So we know that in 2008, it was 168,000. And we know that in 2020, it was about 314,450,000. So somewhere in between 28, 2008 and 2020, it's got to hit 210, okay? And so how do we do that on paper? Let's go ahead and see that. So what you're going to do is the population you know, you want it to be um, 210,000. So divide that by 1,000, because remember P, all these values are in thousands. So it's about 210. So I'm going to plug 210 for P. And then I'm going to take the rest of the equation. And I'm going to solve for T. So first thing is to divide by the 1110.7. 210 divided by, we get this number. Then we're gonna switch the forms over. So this is gonna become log base E of 18970 dot 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 equal to this decimal here. And then remember that log base E is the same thing as the LN. And if I'm trying to solve for t, I'm just going to divide by 0 0.0522 on both sides. So that t equals whatever we get here. So we're going to do fraction ln of that answer that I had in there over 0 0.0522. And I get 12.26. So it obviously has gone a little bit over, but not quite into 13 yet. So about 12 years. So that would mean 2012. Okay, so let's go back here and here would we would put 2012. Okay. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna go look at number 32, 33, 34, 36, and 38. So the first one up is 32. Okay. 
So here we have $1,000 is invested. So that means the P equals $1,000. The rate is already in decimal form, 0 0.055, and it's compounded continuously. So I'm going to use the formula A equals P E to the R T. And it says part A, find the time required for the amount to double. And part B, find the time required to um, Oh, you don't even see anything. So here we go. 32 says a thousand is invested. The rate is a decimal. It's compounded continuously. A asks to find time when it doubles and B is find time when it triples, okay? So if it's doubling for part A, that means that A is gonna be double what I put in, which is 2000. If I'm doing part B and I'm talking about triple, then that means the A would be triple what I put in, which would be 3000. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers into that formula. A, P, E, R, and T. The same thing over here would be 3000. And so then we do have two exponential equations that you need to solve, but first you gotta get rid of those coefficients. So we're gonna divide by the thousand for both equations. So here you get two equals E, and here you get three equals E. So we're gonna change the forms over. It's gonna be log with base E and then the two and the decimal T on the other side. Same thing over here. This one's going to give us log base E of three and the decimal on the other side. This is just an LN button and you are gonna to have to divide by that decimal to get T all by itself. The same thing here, log E is LN and you're gonna to have to divide by this decimal so that you can get T all by itself. And both of these I can type in my calculator, ln of two, 0 0.055. I get that t is about 12.6 years. And if I do it again, but I plug in a three, I get um, t is about 20 years. So it does say round to two decimal places. So then this would be 12.60, and this one would be 19.97. I don't think that you can see my paper. So this was 19.974, which would put it at 19.97. The other one was 12.602, which makes it 12.60. Now let's go ahead and look at number 33. So number 33 has this equation. Now, this is a quadratic type. However, you do have to factor out the common factors first. So I think if I factor out the common factors, they have a five in common, they have an X in common, and they have an E to the four X in common. And when I set that, take that out, I get X and then I get plus one. And so then if I set each factor equal to zero, you have five X E to the four X equal to zero and you have X plus one equal to zero. Here I can minus one on both sides and get X equal to negative one. Here though, you have a product. So you do have to take the five X equal to zero and the E to the four X equal to zero. Now over here, you would divide by five on both sides and you get zero. Over here, you would have to switch the forms over. So when you do that, you're gonna get log base E of zero equal to four X, which is LN of zero equal to four X. 
And if I divide by four to solve for x, I get ln of zero over four. However, when you try to type that in your calculator, it gives you error. We did not see anything that I did on my paper, sorry. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this expression for number 33 and I'm factoring out the common five, the common x, and the common e to the four x. All that leaves me with is the extra x here, nothing here, so it's gotta be times one. Cause this times this should give me this term and this times this should give me that term. Then I set this factor equal to zero and this factor equal to zero. For this one, I minus one on both sides and got a solution, okay? That's one of my solutions. Here, I noticed that I had two factors that had x's in them. So I had to separate 5x equal to zero and e to the 4x equal to zero. Here I solved for it and I got another solution. But over here, I tried to switch the forms over. When I did, I remembered log base e is ln. But when I tried to type this in my calculator, um, it gave me error. And so what that means is you're not going to get a solution from there, okay? So you only end up with two solutions and that's zero and negative one. Now we're gonna do number 34. Number 34 says that the population, again, in thousands of Alaska in years 2005 to 2015 can be modeled by that formula. And it says where T represents the year with five corresponding to 2005. It's during which year did the population of Alaska exceed 730,000? Now, since this is already written in thousands, I can just use the 730 by itself. So I'm gonna stop my sharing and come to my paper. And this can equal 730 because it was already written in thousands. So I am gonna minus the 540 over. And I believe that is 190, but let me make sure. Yes. Then I'm gonna divide by 75. I get this ugly decimal, so I'm gonna rewrite it as a fraction. So it's just 38 over 15 when it reduces. And then I have to remember that this is log base E. So when I convert it to its exponential form, I have to remember that that's a base E. So this becomes base E, and instead of the T, it's gonna be the 38 over 15, and then the T is all by itself. I can type that in there, 38 over 15. And I get that t is approximately 12.5954, so on and so forth. Um, but how do they phrase the question? It says, in which year? So if I got 12, that's going to be 2012. OK, now we can get to number 36. We already did 35 in class. Um, they did change the variables on me, but we did do 35 in class. And we're going to try number um, number 36. So initial investment is 700. So P is 700. I don't know the annual interest rate, and I don't know the time to double. But I do know that the amount, the A, equals $1,505 when um, the T is 10 years. So this is all I know. It did say compounded continuously. So I am going to use this formula and I'm gonna plug in everything that I've been given. So A is 1505, P is 700, R I do not know, and then T is 10. So I'm going to divide by 700 to get the E by itself. 
and I get 2.15 e to the 10 r. I'm going to change this to log base e of 2.15 equal to 10 r, which is the same thing as ln of 2.15. And then I'm going to divide by 10. I'm going to type this in my calculator. ln of 2.15 over 10. And I get 0 0.0765467, so on and so forth. OK, let's go back to the paper, the computer real quick. It does want the rate in a percentage, and it wants it to two decimal places. So um, if I change this to a percentage, that's going to be 7.6546784 percent. And then if I round it to two decimal places, that four is not going to change it. So it's about 7.65 percent. So this is what I'm going to enter for R in the box is 7.65. Now, to do the next part, it asked me to determine um, the time it takes for it to double. So I'm going to take my formula and I'm going to plug in P and I'm going to plug in the R that I just found. And then if I'm wanting to know how long it takes for the amount to double, this amount is going to be double what I put in, which means that would be 1,400. And so then I'm going to divide by 700 on both sides to isolate the exponential. And I get 2. And then I'm going to convert this to a log. So log, the base is e. Instead of this number with the e, the 2 will be over there with the e. And then I'll have this number um, with t on the other side. Remember, this is just ln. And I will have to divide by that coefficient. And so then I'm going to type that in my calculator to figure out what t is. So fraction ln of my answer over, no, ln of 2 over my answer. And I get 9.0552, so on and so forth, which is about 9.06. So that's what I would enter for the time. So here I would enter 7.65%, and here I would enter 9.06 years. 37 we did in class and 39 we did in class. So the next one I'm going to work on is number 38. And that should be it for this video. So for here, 38 says that the half-life is 1599. And the initial quantity, which is the Y with the little zero, is eight grams. What they want me to do is find A when the time is a thousand years. So remember what half life tells you. This is the formula that I have. But half life tells me that the y is half of what you started with when the time is 1599. So I'm going to use this information and plug it into the formula to figure out what R is. Because I cannot find this unless I know um, I need to know what this amount is, and I need to know what R is. I have to know what these two guys are in order for me to do this part. Okay. Now, I do know what the Y naught is. So I know that the Y naught is 8. So that's half the battle. That's great. Um, the problem is, is I don't know R. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the half-life information to figure out what R is. Okay. 
So I know that the y is going to be one half of the y naught, which is half of eight, and that's four, when the t is 1599. So if I divide both sides by eight, I get 0 0.5 equals e to the 1599 r. I can convert this into the log form. that becomes ln of 0 0.5. I am gonna have to divide by the 1599 to solve for R. And if I do that in my calculator, I figure out that R is this decimal. And that's exactly what I needed to do the second part. So now I have a full function And since they're asking me to find A when T is a thousand, I'm just gonna plug in, or not A, I keep using A, but it's find Y when T is a thousand. And so then I'm gonna type all of that in my calculator. Oops, eight E to so that answer times a thousand and I get 5.18592998 and what does it want me to round to? It wants me to round to two decimal places, two decimal places here. So then that would be about 5.19 grams. Okay, so it starts off with eight grams. After some time, it goes down to five. After apparently a thousand years, it goes down to 5.19 grams. And after almost 1600 years, it goes down um, to only four grams. Okay, so I think that's the end of this section. Um, so hopefully that helps you to complete the web assign review with all of this examples. Um, and then I would study that review um, so you could be prepared for the test, okay? I did mention a couple of things like when you're graphing the logs or when you're graphing the exponentials that you make sure that you show those three key points. Um, and then just pay special attention to the problems on the test that say, um, that your, basically your credit's gonna come from anything that's scored at four points or five points. You don't need to show any work for any problem on the test that is scored at four points or five points, because those are just whether you pick the right answer or not. And that's the entire rubric for those specific problems. If the problems are worth eight points or 10 points, those are the ones where you have to actually show all your work or show your steps um, to show how you get there. Um, I'm not real specific on what you need to show or how to show it because there's so many different methods that you can use to solve these guys. Um, I choose one particular method and that's to use the one-to-one -one property when I have exponentials on both sides or I use the one-to-one -one property when I have logs on both sides. But if I only have an exponential and a number or a log and a number, then normally what I do is I switch the form over into the other kind of function. So if it was an exponential equation, I'll switch it over to a log equation. If it were a log equation, I'd switch it over into an exponential equation. That's just my technique and how I do it. However, the book and WebAssign have been showing you other different techniques and they're completely plausible. They work as long as you um, apply them correctly, you can do them that way, okay? So if you're used to doing the problems the way WebAssign is explaining how to do the problems, you can do it that way. I'm just gonna make sure that you're doing it correctly and then you can still get all of your credit, even though you're doing a different method than I personally would have chosen, okay? Um, so that's it, that's all I have for you guys. Um, happy computing, happy studying and have a great weekend and I will see you all on Monday if in your face-to-face -face class and if you're online, I guess I won't technically see you, but I will start grading those 
um, test starting on Tuesday and hopefully have your feedback as soon as possible. Okay. So that's it. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.